ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Winner of the 2024 West Virginia Broadcasters Association Excellence in Broadcasting Award for Best Talk Show. It is Monday, October 14th. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in. We've got a fun show for you today. Our text line this hour is going to be 304-396-TALK. 304-396-8255. Got a lot of news to go over today, but I'm sure the one thing everybody wants to talk about, of course, is Saturday night, Georgia Southern coming back. 21 unanswered points to beat the Thundering Herd, 24 to 23. For those of you that was with us on Saturday night, now it was Sunday morning actually when we got on the air with our post game. And for those of you that weren't able to hang on and, and stay up that late, we had a lot of opinions come out on on Saturday night, Sunday morning about the state of martial athletics, where Coach Uff is right now, where the program is. So now that we've had some time to maybe cool off a little bit, think about it. Time to revisit it a little bit. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We have three games that I think two of them Marshall could have won. And the three games that Marshall lost, two of them Marshall could have won. Virginia Tech and Georgia Southern. I think those were Marshall victories. Absolutely. The Ohio State game is the only game in which I thought Marshall – will give a good fight to Ohio State, which it did. Just Marshall's not going to win that game. And I was right on that one. Good fight by the Herd, not a victory. The other two, those I felt were, and I'm sure coaches hate hearing this, winnable games. Those were games in which Marshall could have won and probably should have won, especially this Georgia Southern game. Giving up 21 unanswered, really, I don't know what the momentum's going to be like on Thursday from this team. We're going to hear from Coach Huff in just a few minutes. Got his thoughts from the uh, presser he did earlier today for the Sun Belt Media. So we'll get his thoughts on where this team's at right now. He's not happy. I can tell you that right now. He did take some responsibility for the loss on Saturday. So where are you at right now with this Thundering Herd team? And I've also seen a lot of people just say on social media, I, I think they're venting, I really do, I hope they're venting, that they're just not coming on Thursday. Thursday night game, they're not coming, they're fed up, they're sick and tired of this. And of course, I think we've heard this before, a lot of people were not coming as well, Doc Holliday, a lot of people were not coming as well. With Mark Snyder, his name was invoked on Saturday with a lot of people. And I felt that there was a huge momentum shift especially when you make that quarterback change, again, multiple quarterback changes, and you bring in Stone Earl, and I thought Stone was fine, but you bring in Braylon Braxton and sort of, okay, let's get it done. He goes out there and he gets it done, and then you start switching quarterbacks, and I don't know how much of that really impacted the momentum, impacted the ability of players to stay locked in. I guess when your number's called, you got to be ready, right? Honestly, if, if your number's called, okay, I'm ready, coach. All right, we're putting you back in. Are you ready? Yep, I'm ready, coach. I guess that's the attitude. At least you hope that's the attitude. But it started to go downhill. I listened to a little bit of Clay Helton today, and um, you know he basically said that you know we felt good. There were some moments where we were moving the ball, and we just weren't getting points, and we kind of felt good around halftime. And then Marshall gives up that safety. All of a sudden, it's 23-5. And then you've got the the Braxton fumble, and that is a, a big turnover. Turnovers were key. Marshall had three in that fourth quarter. And so at that point, after the safety, and then you get the touchdown with 6.31 to go in the fourth quarter, made it 23-11. Okay, it's a 12-point game. All Marshall has to do is uh, be smart about this, maybe go down and score another point or two, get a, get a field goal, get a, get a touchdown, get something, and you might be able to put this thing away. But Braxton fumbles, so that's a Marshall turnover. That's the direct result of the touchdown at 215. It makes it 23-18. It's a five-point game. Okay, you get a field goal, then they're going to have to get a touchdown and, and they're going to have to convert on two to, 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 to tie it. And so Braxton fumbles again, 155 to go in the fourth. And I thought that D.V. Harris saved the day. I really did. And that sack of Dexter Williams with a minute 31 to go, I thought that was a saving moment right there. Like, yes, Marshall, Marshall stood up to him. 
And then they convert on, yeah, they convert on third down. Drive still alive. It was third and 17. They convert, keep that drive alive. Turns out to be a touchdown with a minute to go. Makes it 24-23. At that point, it's 21 unanswered points. And so Stone Earl, he's back in. You probably don't feel good about where Braxton's at. He's fumbled twice, so you're feeling like, okay, I can't put him in there. I got to put Stone in. And then Stone throws the interception. It's over. 24-23. Marshall loses to Georgia Southern, a game I thought that Marshall had in control. And talking to a few people that were at the game from the Georgia Southern side before and after, they're like, hey, we don't know what happened either. We thought Marshall had this game. So our text line was pretty busy Sunday morning. It's busy now. Let's get to it here. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. It's been a couple days since we've talked. First up, Texture says, Paul, I am speechless when it comes to Saturday night. Regardless, I'll be at the Joan Thursday night. I predict maybe 15,000 Thursday night is going to be the attendance. Uh, And also bring the hand warmers. Go herd. Yeah, bring the hand warmers. Bring me some too, if you would. 15, is it going to be because of the sour, the sour feeling a lot of people have right now? Or is it the Thursday night or is it a combination? 15,000 maybe? I'm hoping it's more than that. Also from the text line, Texture says, Paul, I can live with losing a game, but to give it away is sickening. Coach Huff never takes blame, and he always has an excuse. His postgame comments um, where you have to fail before you succeed, really? I'm trying to like him as a coach, but he's making it hard. Go herd. We're going to hear his comments a little bit later on. I want to get your reaction to that afterwards. He did take some responsibility and I'll let you listen to that in a few minutes, and you can tell me where you think he's at on that. Texter says, Paul, heard, quote, I'm sorry, Huff, quote, this is according to the texter. Texter says, Huff, quote, we had the lead, we could end the game running the ball. Take your foot off the gas, run the clock out. That's Doc Holliday football. Bob Pruitt played air pedal to the metal to the final whistle. Huff's air raid offense, my foot? Probably not the the right inflection on that. I'm sorry. I like playing to win the game. I'm not the head coach, so I don't make those decisions. And I know this isn't a game of Madden where I'm throwing on fourth down, but I felt like there was a line I drew in my notes because it was it was a boring game. It was a Marshall lead, but it was a little boring at, at one point. Oh, okay, Marshall's got this. But it, like, it felt like Marshall was playing to lose. And that's where I've got the, the line in my notes. It was a 20-point lead. You make that switch, and, and I'm feeling like, okay, Marshall's just trying to salt this away. They're, they're, they're sort of playing to lose here. I know coaches aren't trying to lose. They're not playing to lose, but that's what I'm going to call it, playing to lose. Maybe the preparation was off. Maybe the gaming of the, uh, of the, of the situation was off. Maybe – Just the game plan itself wasn't good. Maybe Georgia Southern saw something and started to take advantage of the herd and was able to make some things happen. I mean, maybe it was just some bad breaks for the Thundering Herd. There are so many ways you can spin this. But we're going to hear from Coach Huff in in just a few minutes and get his thoughts on the game. We're also going to keep the text line open for you at 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. I want to hear from you what you think. And, of course, especially after you hear Coach Huff and what he had to say today, I want to find out where you're at on that. I mean – it was a terrible weekend. Ohio almost lost, right? The Buckeyes lose. The Wildcats lose. The Mountaineers lose. Marshall loses. All of the big schools that we pretty much, you can draw a circle around Huntington, and there you have it. All the big schools that in this area you have fans of. Everybody lost. Cleveland lost. So I feel sorry for Browns fans. No, I'm lying. And... It was Sunday night football. The Bengals played the Giants. Bengals won 17 to 7. You know what that means. It's uh, it's time for another Bengals rewind. Here's this week's package. Joe Burrow showed off his legs. The defense came up big, and the Bengals got a much-needed win on the road. Chase Brown sealed it late with a big touchdown run, and Cincinnati's defense kept the Giants off balance all night. I'm Paul Swan. It's time for your Bengals Rewind. 
In a game where the Bengals desperately needed a spark, Joe Burrow delivered on the very first drive, breaking free for a 47-yard touchdown run to give Cincinnati an early 7-0 lead. Dan Horde and Dave Lapham with the call. Shotgun snap. It's a five-man rush. Burrow runs. Oh, baby. He's at the 35, the Score. 25, Score. 20, 15, 10, 5. Oh. Dive for the pylon. Yeah. Touchdown! A 47-yard oh. touchdown run by Joe Burrow. It wasn't just Burrow's legs making an impact. On the Giants' next drive, linebacker Jermaine Pratt picked off Daniel Jones to end the threat and keep Cincinnati's momentum. Momentum rolling. Here's Horde and lap them again. Play action fake and a roll out to the right. Pick Pick pass it. deflected Pick it. and intercepted. Yeah. The Bengals have the ball. Jermaine Pratt running it back to the 20, 25, and a pair of offensive linemen will make the tackle at the 27 yard line. The game remained tight in the second half. The Giants tied it up at 7 7 in the third quarter when Tyrone Tracy Jr. punched in a one yard run following a Bengals turnover, recovering Joe Burrow's fumble. Here Here's Bob Papa from the Giants Radio Network. Jones calls signal, takes the snap, hands it off, running to the end zone and in for the touchdown Giants, Tyrone Tracy. But the Bengals bounce back in the fourth quarter. Chase Brown broke free for a 30-yard touchdown run to secure the win. Ford again with the call on the Bengals Radio Network. Ball goes in motion. They give it to Chase Brown. Nice. He's got the first down See four. See the middle of the field. 10, 5, rolls into the end zone. Touchdown! Bengals with 152 to go, and that is Coffin Nail. The Bengals defense locked down from there, holding the Giants scoreless the rest of the way. Burrow finished with 208 passing yards. The Bengals defense forced crucial turnovers, including Pratt's interception that set the tone early. The Giants struggled to move the ball with Daniel Jones throwing for just 205 yards and no touchdowns. The Bengals improved to two and four with the win and will look to build on this momentum as they head back home next week to face a division rival, the Cleveland Browns. Meanwhile, the Giants drop to two and four and will try to regroup before taking on the Washington Commanders next week at MetLife Stadium. I'm Paul Swan with your Bengals Rewind. Stuck in a state of falling behind, struggling to keep up with kids, finances, insurance, and life? Well, let your State Farm agent help you simplify and get to a better state. With State Farm handling your auto, home, and life insurance, you'll have more time to handle everything else. More money, too. Adding State Farm policies can earn discounts that could add up to 40% help you get ahead. Call an agent today and get to a better state with State Farm. In Huntington, Ray Crabtree, 304-736-8181. In Milton, Russ McRae, 304-743-9318. And in Lavalette, Jason Elkins, 304-529-7555. Metro Community Federal Credit Union has been serving the Huntington community for 70 years and is proud to announce our newest location in Lavalette is now open. Wayne County residents, you now have access to a modern banking facility, a full range of services, advanced technology, expert financial advice, and even a smart coffee kiosk cafe. Learn more about Metro Community Federal Credit Union online at metrocommunityfcu.com or visit us today on 5th Street Road. Equal housing lender, member NCUA. Hey, Tri-State, Frank's Place is where friends hang out with friends. Stop on by for happy hour from 4 to 6 p.m. and a lot of daily specials. It's that time of year again, football season. Frank's has you covered from Marshall, WVU, the rest of college football to the NFL. First responders, stop by Frank's Place and check out the specials they have for you. Frank's Place, located at the River Place Plaza, next to Fratelli's. Check them out on Facebook for weekly updates and specials. Frank's Place, your or home away from home. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Stahl, board certified urologist and senior vice president of men's sexual health at HIMSS. In my 12 years of practice as a reproductive urologist, I've helped many guys with ED, and it has never been more convenient to treat than it is right now thanks to HIMSS. It really wasn't easy before. You had to take time out of your day come to a physical office and see a specialist like me in person. Now, through hims.com, you can get world-class sexual health care and a full range of treatment options for ED through a 100% online process. It starts with a free assessment from a medical provider licensed in your state who can determine if ED treatment is right for you. If prescribed, your medication is shipped to you for free. So don't wait. Join the hundreds of thousands of guys who've gotten help for their ED through Hims. To start your free online visit and find ED treatment at up to 95% off brand name prices, go to hims.com 
slash joy. That's hymns.com slash joy for your free online visit. Order for Jennifer C. Is this my double shot, double cream, double froth, double pump, double hot, double whip, double sleeve? Uh, yeah. Can you handle that much caffeine? Hey, did you know Discover automatically doubles all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year? Well, I do now. Seriously, did you know Discover automatically doubles all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year? Yeah, you, you just said that. Did you say I just said that? Yeah, I'm cutting you off. Did you say you're cutting me off? You earn, we match. Unlimited cash back match. See terms at discover.com slash credit card. Hello, treasure hunters. Have you been to Sue's Junk and Antique Mall? The largest antique mall in the tri-state. It just keeps getting bigger and better. With over 250 vendors, their inventory changes every day. So there's always something new to discover. Shop at Sue's for household items, antiques, knives, jewelry, furniture, and more. And don't forget their online sale on Facebook every Monday at 6 p.m. Sue's Junk and Antique Mall, 459 Camden Road, Huntington, West Virginia, where our odds and ends become your favorite. Favorite jams at Sue's Junk and Antique Mall. Celebrate three new drinks at the Human Bean: the Pumpkin Snowy, the Pumpkin Java Chip, and the S'mores Mocha. The Pumpkin Snowy is a delicious blending of white chocolate and espresso with pumpkin. The Pumpkin Java Chip is available as a granita or as a smoothie. The S'mores Mocha features chocolate and toasted marshmallow flavors. The Human Bean, locally owned and operated, located at the Pea Ridge Plaza in Huntington and next to Ashland Community and Technical College in Ashland. The human bean with a bean on top. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to our Monday edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We're going to hear from Coach Huff in just a few minutes as we're recapping Marshall's loss at Georgia Southern. Her is now getting set for Georgia State. And we're going to keep our text line open this hour, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Also, we've got a short week, but that doesn't mean I won't be giving tickets away. I've got tickets all this week, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. I'm going to give you a four-pack of tickets for those of you that will be heading out Thursday night looking for a ticket. I got you covered, so we'll give you tickets a little bit later on. And, of course, how do we do that? Well, it's random, but you have to be a part of our text line to do that. 304-396-TALK, that's our text line. You know, Usually you give me a pretty good text or you, you predict a score, something like that. Let's go back to our text line. Texter says, Paul, ESPN is this morning has Marshall favored nine and a half against Georgia State. That's crazy after what just went down. I mean, Georgia State's not that much better. Honestly, I thought Marshall should have beat Georgia Southern. So based off that and forget the debacle, forget the breakdown, I still think Marshall should have beat Georgia Southern. And I would have had Marshall favored at home against Georgia State. I still would have Marshall favored after that game against Georgia State. But that's interesting. Nine and a half. Back to our text line. The texter says, uh, Paul, fumbles notwithstanding, it seems clear that the offense functions better with Braxton. Has he earned the number one role? If you're just asking me and my opinion as someone who watches the game, not as someone who breaks the film down and practice with them and going through their game planning and everything else that goes on behind the scenes, I would say just the eyeball test and nothing more. I think Braylon Braxton's the quarterback. He's the number one. And I had a couple of people, again, after the game and during the game, and they were from Georgia Southern. They were like, hey, Braxton, that guy's the real deal. He's QB1 here. You know, We like him. And so I'm getting that from different people, not just me, not just fans, not just others who are uh, close to the Marshall program. This is people that were from Georgia Southern telling me, hey, you know, we really like this Braxton kid. He's good. He's he's probably the quarterback one. And I don't want to say anything bad about Stone Earl, but I thought that Marshall operated better with Braxton in this game. And I don't know if you're trying to juggle two quarterbacks. Maybe you just you don't do that. I mean you've got two capable quarterbacks, but I think you gotta make sure that you're putting the emphasis on the guy that can be QB one every game and then have someone capable behind. Now, if this lead would have been greater than 20, I'm thinking, sure, maybe you put someone in when the game's done. But 20-point lead, that's not a safe cushion. I mean, you're trying to salt the game away, and a few minutes ago you get a late score. 
you know, then you feel good about it because there's not enough time on the clock. But there was plenty of time on the clock, and I didn't think that a 20-point lead was safe for the Thundering Herd. My opinion, also from the text line, um, as I listened to your recall, I got sick again, Paul. With that said, it took a perfect storm for us to lose. About 15 things went wrong in that final seven minutes. All had to happen for Georgia Southern to win. Also, with that said, question I have first, this team gets a big lead and plays not to lose. Our swagger does not our swagger does not for this. I'm sorry, just reading it verbatim here. Coach needs to be of the mindset beat teams by a hundred. We can't slow down. Second, where was Turner during that last seven minutes? Over seven yards per carry and it disappeared in the end. And not to even mention the merry go round that is the quarterback battle. All right, I appreciate that text. We hopefully will get some answers tomorrow. We got at least something today. Coach Huff speaking with the Sun Belt Media earlier and always opens up with his, uh, his usual statement, opening remarks. And I'll let you hear that. He talked a little bit about the game as he looked ahead, obviously. You, know, you couldn't ignore what happened on Saturday. So this is Coach Huff earlier this afternoon addressing the Sun Belt Media with his opening remarks. Yeah, um, obviously a disappointing finish um, to the game. Hats off to Georgia Southern for battling for 60 minutes. Um, I, I apologize to all of her nation. I did not do a good job as a head coach of getting our guys to finish in the last four minutes of the game. That's on me. Um, as a head coach, I take extreme ownership over it. Um, Got to find a way to get our guys to hold on to the ball um, and finish out the game in the very end. Uh, the plan we had, we felt good about. So it was not good enough. So as coaches, as a staff, we take extreme ownership. Uh, we've got to give our kids a better chance to be successful um, in the back end of a game. Again, hats off to Georgia Southern. They battled for the whole time. They made some big plays in the end of the game um, that really gave them a chance to be successful. Thought our kids battled and played phenomenal for 56 and a half minutes. Um, thought our plan for 56 and a half minutes was really good. We've got to be better at the end. This community deserves better. The locker room deserves better. Um, that's on me. Uh, we will be better Thursday night. I can promise you that. Um, still a lot of great things ahead of us. Getting ready for a phenomenal opponent here in Huntington um, in Georgia State. We've been um, very good throughout this year in spurts. Obviously, um, they've had some moments they'd like to have back like all of us, but they are on. They are on. Their offense is really good. Um, defensively, they fly around. They're physical. Um, they're good in the back end. So it's going to be a challenge this Thursday. So that's Coach Huff's opening statement earlier. So he takes ownership, disappointing finish. What do you think? Is that what you wanted to hear on Saturday night, Sunday morning from him? Or is that a little bit more of, okay, he's had some time, he's had time to sit down, take it all in, what happened, and he's able to process that better? Is that more of what you maybe expected, you thought you wanted to hear, on Saturday night, Sunday morning after the loss. Now, if you were listening on Saturday night, Sunday morning, and you heard Coach Huff talk about, hey, you know, we got like 72 hours. We've got a short time to get ready. We're going to be, you know, tomorrow when we were talking or this morning, however he phrased it, you know, they had to get home, get rested, and then get right back at it and, and do practice. So it's it's a short week. They're They're trying to turn things around question was asked about just what was the temperament of that first practice yesterday and coach Huff was direct and quick with that response pissed off extremely pissed off uh, we know we let one get away and that's no disrespect to Georgia Southern I mean, that wasn't our standard it's not who we are the kids know it's not who we are um, I told them that I apologized to them because I didn't get them a better plan in the end they told me to go to hell because they said players make plays so they took extreme ownership over it I took extreme ownership over it um, we'll, we'll come out of the tunnel with a different fire in our eyes Thursday night I can promise you that so we're going to see a different attitude thundering herd, and I'm sure the question from a lot of fans would be, well, where was that on Saturday? I'm just going to ask it for you because I get that from a lot of people. Where was that on Saturday? And so it takes a loss like this to maybe rekindle it. Those are probably some of the questions that a lot of herd fans are asking. As we go to our text line, Texture says, sure, Georgia Southern fans love Braxton. Yeah, you're taking that out of context. This was before the fumbles. I'm talking to people who are working in the media 
and they're telling me, hey, this quarterback is good. This kid's good. And that's before the fumbles. Yeah, I'm sure they love him now because of the two fumbles. And again, put the quarterback in, you take him out, you put the quarterback in. Hot, cold, hot, cold. I'm not throwing the quarterback under the bus. I'm not throwing Stone Earl under the bus. I'm not throwing Braylon Braxton under the bus. This was a complete team loss, top to bottom. And that lead just evaporated. 21 unanswered. There are a lot of people at fault there, not just one play, not just two plays. Three turnovers definitely hurt the thundering herd. Coach Huff continued on his presser. He was asked about the short week and just kind of give an evaluation what he sees with Georgia State. And again, he talked about when they're on, they're on. You look at what they were able to do so far on the schedule. They lost to Georgia Tech 35-12. to Then they beat Chattanooga. It was a close one, 24-21. And then they beat Vanderbilt, 36-32. So when they're on, they're on. And then they lost to Georgia Southern, a team that beat Marshall. They lost 38-30. I'm sorry, 38-21. And then Old Dominion got them, 21-14. So this is the first true road game as well for Georgia State. They, They have a great win against Vanderbilt. Close loss to Georgia Tech. Beat a Chattanooga team very close that they should have beat. Georgia Southern, that's a rivalry game. They lost that 38-21, and, of course, they fall to Old Dominion. Uh, Old Dominion and a close one. Imagine that. So now here's Marshall, Coach Huff, talking about the short turnaround, talking about the team. He sees when they're on, they're on. Yeah, we're going to take care of the ball. Uh, that, that's a big piece of it. You turn the ball over in this league multiple times, and, and you're, you're going to get beat. Um, that's top to bottom in this league, um, home or away. And the other thing is, you know, we had been averaging about three penalties a game. Uh, we had 11 last week. Um, you combine those with three turnovers in the fourth quarter, 11 penalties, you, you're asking for, for a recipe for disaster. If that had happened over the course of the game, we would have lost the game. We just wouldn't have did it in the last four minutes. Um, you know, we get two touchdowns called back for penalties. And that, that changes the whole dynamic of the game. Um, you know, we get a penalty on a punt return that puts us, you know, inside the five. You know, at that point, if, even if we just walk the ball down the field five yards and punt it away, it changes that dynamic of the game. Um, so in order for us to do what we need to do Thursday night, uh, we've got to take care of the ball. We've got to play disciplined football. We can't have the penalties. We can't put ourselves inside the five, you know, to start drives. Uh, one of them, we dug our way out and went 97 yards. Um, the other one, we ended up giving up two points on a um, intentional grounding call. Um, so in order for us to be successful Thursday night, which we will do a better job of taking care of the ball, making sure that our penalties are not tripping us up, putting ourselves in a position to be able to win the game on execution and not um, marshal created issues. Um, that's what we got to do. That's what I got to get these guys to do. That's what the staff's got to get these guys to do um, so that we give ourselves a chance Thursday night. And that's how he responded when he was asked about the short week and you know, what, what he sees, what the game plan is going to be, what's the team going to have to do when you take on this state team. And as he said earlier, again, in his remarks, when they're on, they're on. You look at their schedule, it's kind of – there's a really good win here, and uh, here's a, a win that they probably want back, and here's a win that kind of scratching your head over. Here's a loss you're scratching your head over. It, you kind of – you can do that with everybody's schedule. Text line 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Texter says, I've been saying all season that Braylon Braxton should have been the starter. The coaches should have never taken him out. Glad the coaches are taking ownership of this Huff Beaters Marshall Meltdowns game. And we should have run the ball in the fourth quarter with the way our running backs had been successful. All right, I appreciate that text. One more from Coach Huff, and then we'll get the break. 304-396-TALK is the text line. The last question, half a statement, half a question. It was pointed out to Huff, hey, look, we get it. Hear hear where you're coming from. The season's halfway over. You You got a lot of football ahead. And let's be realistic. If Marshall wins out, there's a possibility Marshall could have at least a share of the East Division title. There's a possibility there. Marshall could have controlled his destiny a lot more with a win, but as it stands now, there's still a strong possibility Marshall could win out and be in a good spot. I'm sure a lot of Herd fans don't want to hear that right now. I'm sure a lot of Herd fans are banking on that. But as far as Coach Huff, when he was asked about this and 
the setup was. There's a lot going on. Coach basically indicated that you know he can't speak for anybody outside the building, but inside the building, uh, there's no panic. Yeah, I mean, we, we're not. I mean, I, I can't speak for outside of this building, but we're not. The sky is falling. Um, we, we strongly believe in what we set out to do. We still strongly believe in that. Uh, we're, we're frustrated because um, you know when you get an opportunity to go out and create value for yourself, you want to do that. Whether it's the first game, last game, midway. Um, as far as the road that we're on, journey we're on. Um, I, I'm not sure the locker room could be in a better place. I'm not sure the leadership could be in a better place. I'm not sure the players could be in a better place. Um, we, when our, we have a leadership meeting every you know Sunday just to kind of you know set the tone for the week. Um, and they told me, it's like, Coach, you, you go up to the plate and you get a chance to hit a home run and you strike out. That doesn't mean that you're not going to get three more at-bats tonight. Um, it just means that that opportunity, you had an opportunity, you didn't take advantage of it. That doesn't affect, um, in our view, you know, the next game or the game after that. That just, whenever you get opportunities in life, whether it's, you know, very small, very minimal or very big, you want to be able to take advantage of it. My kids work way too hard each and every week um, to go out and miss an opportunity. Now, obviously, you work 365 days for 12 of those opportunities, so you still have a lot of big picture um, things ahead of you, but you still don't want to miss any step, you know. There's a lot of plays in that game our guys are frustrated about that a lot of people that watch the entire game won't even realize. Um, you know, there were some reads that we were missed. Um, there were some opportunities missed defensively. Jacoby Henderson probably could have had three interceptions. Um, you know, he got one, but he had a chance for three other or two other ones. Um, he's more disappointed about the missed opportunities for those other two um, than he is about, you know, the last play of the game. You know, so. For us, it's a little bit more, we want to make sure we maximize each and every opportunity. That takes nothing away from the opponent. Um, all of the issues that we had uh, were created, right? They ripped the ball out, whether he was down or not down. Um, they threw a pass at the end of the game and complete. They still executed, um, but we felt like there were things that we could have done that would have negated that, and that's what we try to focus on each week, each play, each drive. That's Coach Huff. We'll have more from him tomorrow. Our weekly get-together with him takes place, and, of course, we'll hear from tomorrow. We're going to have basketball media day for the Sun Belt coming up, so we'll hear a little bit from Cornelius Jackson tomorrow as well as the Herd preseason Polls are out. We'll talk about that for the men and women when we continue on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Hey, Tri-State, there is a place to shop at. The Huntington's Peddler's Mall is now open in the historic Central City District in Huntington. Over 200 vendors specializing in vintage antiques, home decor, furniture, collectibles, new mattresses, and everything in between. Peddler's Mall, located 814th Street West in Huntington. It's the place to go. Open seven days a week. Visit anytime. Check out the website, peddlersmall.com, for more information. It's the Tri-State place to shop, Huntington's Peddler's Mall. Stalwart Insurance is the name for insurance in the Tri-State. They are committed to delivering tailored benefit solutions with thoughtful, strategic planning with valuable professional services. Stop by or call Stalwart Insurance for your homeowner's insurance needs. Stalwart Insurance is located right beside Kenny Queen Hardware on Route 10 in Barbersville. Call Stalwart Insurance anytime at 304-552-3883. That's 304-552-3883. Or visit them online at stalwartinsurance.com. At Polka Valley Bank, a handshake can still mean the start of a great relationship. We've been greeting customers with a handshake since 1908. Why settle for less? If you're purchasing your first home or planning for your future, Polka Valley Bank is here to support you with personalized service and local expertise. They are your trusted advisors. Why settle for less when you can experience banking with a team that truly cares? Polka Valley Bank, where relationships matter. Visit polkavalleybank.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lending. Giovanni's Pizza. Fresh, hot, and tasty. Have it delivered right to your door. Giovanni's. The Italian place to be. Our Kindred Communications family of stations reminds you of the need for blood donations to the Red Cross. Blood is always needed. It may save your life or the life of a loved one. This reminder is brought to you in part by Ohio Valley Bank, dedicated to giving you the financial answers you deserve. Member FDIC, Carmichael Sales, carrying a great selection of used tractors, hay, and tillage equipment. 798 Pinecrest Drive, Jackson Pike, Secure Construction Company in Huntington. Secure Construction is home improvement in secure hands. SecureConstruction.com. Sweet chocolate reward. Sweet chocolate reward. This is not just the sound of someone picking up a sweet treat at Walgreens. 
This is the sound of someone picking up a sweet treat right after receiving all their vaccines in one trip. This is the sound of treating yourself because you protected yourself. Stop by or schedule both your flu and COVID-19 vaccines today and grab yourself a sweet treat while you're at it. Vaccine subject to availability. State, age, and health-related restrictions may apply. Hey, Tri-State. Frank's Place is where friends hang out with friends. Stop on by for happy hour from 4 to 6 p.m. and a lot of daily specials. It's that time of year again. Football season. Frank's has you covered from Marshall, WVU, the rest of college football, to the NFL. First responders, stop by Frank's Place and check out the specials they have for you. Frank's Place, located at the River Place Plaza, next to Fratelli's. Check them out on Facebook for weekly updates and specials. Frank's Place, your home away from home. Bluegrass Wound Care and Hyperbarics in Ashland is different. Bluegrass Wound Care is not just a wound care center, it's a wound healing center. The experts at Bluegrass Wound Care and Hyperbarics provide compassionate and advanced care. Their skilled team equipped with state-of-the-art technology is here for you. Make your appointment today and enjoy convenient parking within 25 feet of the door. Call 606-325-6493 or visit bluegrasswoundcare.com. Bluegrass Wound Care and Hyperbarics, we are wound care in Kentucky. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We continue on with this edition of The Drive on Monday, October 14th. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Text line this hour is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Good news for the basketball team. A couple of uh, preseason nods today. First up, Nate Martin, named first team Sunbelt Conference preseason. Obina Anachili Killen, second team Sunbelt preseason. Men picked 10th in the Sunbelt this year. They picked 10th to finish. Aislinn Hayes, she was named first team Sunbelt preseason, and the women were picked sixth in the conference this year. I think there are a lot of unknowns with the men, so I can see where 10th might be where the men end up. And again, it's a coach's poll. The women, maybe new coach, not getting the uh, same respect. Maybe a couple of personnel changes here or there. And the the media usually uh, would probably fall in line with the coach's poll after the fact. But I think the coaches think, okay, you know, there'll be a good team, maybe not the team that won the conference last year. It's interesting where these things go. And again, this is just complete guess. Nobody knows where this team's going to start and where this team's going to end. As far as the herd's concerned, the men got some work to do. If they want to work their way out of that 10 spot and be actually one of those teams contending at the end. And for the women, I would look at this for those turning players. uh, It's kind of a chip on my shoulder. Hey, look, we won this thing last year. We're not giving it up. All right, let's go back to our text line, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Texter says, Paul, I'm not blaming Braxton for the loss. Pin it on the offense, defense, and mostly the coaching staff. We were outcoached. All right, appreciate that text. Also from the text line, Texter says, Paul, changing quarterbacks was questionable. Changing at that field position was mind-numbing. Appreciate that text, calling out what they thought was maybe a poor decision from the coach. Texture says, Paul, I'm just anxious to see how many more millions of dollars and how many more years Marshall University is going to extend H.R. Huff and Stuff's contract. I don't think people get that reference. H.R. Huff and Stuff? I don't know. If you get that reference, let me know. You might win tickets for that one if you know what that reference is. If you don't, tell me if you get that reference or not. I'm kind of curious. I get the reference, H.R. Huff and Stuff. I know where that's coming from. I love our text line. You guys keep it up. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. So what do you think of these, uh, these preseason nods and where the men and the women end up in the preseason poll? you think the men are better than a 10 spot? And do you think the women are better than a 6 spot? I think the men are probably going to have to go out and show that they're better. I think the women, I could use this as a little fuel and say, look, for those of you returning, you, you won this conference last year. Now, you know, I'm I'm not Coach Caldwell. I'm Coach Folks. Yeah, but we're going to go at it, and we're going to show that we're better than six. I mean, I don't know what the, the preseason hype speech is. 
Or do the players, coaches really care about this? I'm sure outside of, hey, congratulations to Aislinn Hayes. She's excited. Then, all right, let's get to work. I'm sure Nate Martin, Obina, and the Chili Kill, and they're, they're excited. But, okay, they picked us 10th. Maybe, maybe we're better than that and we should show the league. I think that's kind of the, the feeling here. All right, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Uh, going back to the text line for you listening, I, I don't understand your uh, your musical reference there, so you might have to uh, try again. Quick timeout. We'll get more of your text coming up. Again, some of these, I some of these, you got to be super clear sometimes in these texts. There's some abstract stuff out here. More coming up. It's the drive. ESPN ninety four point one and AM nine thirty. Now is the time to add on a new bathroom or remodel your old one with the latest up to date bathroom fixtures from Mutual Wholesalers. Seven ten Fifth Street, Huntington. Come in today to Mutual Wholesalers' beautiful showroom and see how your new bathroom will look. Check out Acre by Max. Have a new bathroom this year. Mutual Wholesalers. Sailors, locally owned and operated, 710 Fifth Street, Huntington. Call 304 525 9118. Stalwart Insurance is the name for insurance in the tri state. They are committed to delivering tailored benefit solutions with thoughtful, strategic planning with valuable professional services. Stop by or call Stalwart Insurance for your homeowner's insurance needs. Stalwart Insurance is located right beside Kenny Queen Hardware on Route 10 in Barbersville. Call Stalwart Insurance anytime at 304-552-3883. That's 304-552-3883. Or visit them online at stalwartinsurance.com. Seal off drafts, dust, and moisture with MD Weather Stripping from Menards. A well-sealed home is more comfortable and energy efficient. We have the largest selection of in-stock weather stripping with over 130 products available to take home and start lowering your energy bills today. Save big money on weather stripping right now at Menards. And check out our weekly flyer on Menards.com for more great deals. Save big money at Menards. Welcome to Staples, young man. Tomorrow's my big day. Big day? First grade. Aw. Well, you know, Staples has crayons, markers, glue. I need a laptop. Oh, yeah, sure. With Staples Hot Deals, you can save up to $300 on select PCs for school. Wait, wait. The finances are mom's department. Right. I'm looking for performance, like a Core i7 processor. Boy, first grade has really changed. <sighs> Tell me about it. Save big on tech for school with super low Staples Hot Deals. Right now, get up to $300 off select PCs at Staples. Ends 824. Order for Jennifer C. Is this my double shot, double cream, double froth, double pump, double hot, double whip, double sleeve? Uh, yeah. Can you handle that much caffeine? Hey, did you know Discover automatically doubles all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year? Well, I do now. Seriously, did you know Discover automatically doubles all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year? Yeah, you, you just said that. Did you say I just said that? Yeah, I'm cutting you off. Did you say you're cutting me off? You earn, we match. Unlimited cash back match. See terms at discover.com slash credit card. Hey, can I share a secret? Collins Career Technical Center. It's the best kept secret in the tri-state. Small class sizes, personalized attention, and hands-on learning with the latest equipment. And you know what? It's not just for high school students. Their adult programs can jumpstart any career. Many grads have job offers before they even finish. That's the magic of Collins Career Technical Center. Hey, head on over to collins-cc.edu and get signed up before everyone finds out about this. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Winner of the 2024 West Virginia Broadcasters Association Excellence in Broadcasting Award for Best Talk Show. We'll wrap it up today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Texter writes in and says, Paul, Thursday will be the true indicator. It will tell the tale. It will... It will be a game in which if Marshall comes out unmotivated and takes another loss, look out. Also from the text line, Texter says, Paul, the herd still has a lot to play for and can still get to a conference championship, in my opinion. Our team played good enough to win, but the coaches have to be better. Also from the text line, the Texter says, Paul, I got the reference. Maybe Coach Huff needs a magic flute. That's um that's another one of those uh, HR Puffin stuff references, right? I'm telling you, I, I don't I mean, that show came on like 1969. That show was on from like 1969 to um, 1971. I mean, it was in reruns, I'm sure, 
Um, it was on TV land as well. I, I don't know how many people get that reference. I mean, it's funny. And, of course, the, the, the flute's name was Freddie the Flute, by the way. If, you, if you're ever wondering. I mean, since we've opened it up and since uh, we're going to play off of Coach Huff's name, the uh, flute was Freddie the Flute. Now, the one striking thing about this show was, of course, there was um, there's H, you know, H.R. Puff and stuff. Um, he was a friendly dragon. So you have friendly dragon named H.R. Puff and stuff. And then there was Freddie the Flute. Freddie the Flute was actually a talking flute. And then everybody remembers Witchy Poo. Witchy Poo was like the villain of this show. And, and there's some other sub characters here. I'm not going to get into the entire cast of H.R. Puff and stuff. But um, H.R. Puff and stuff was a magical dragon. And it was part of one of those Sid and Marty Croft productions. If you remember, if you know, you know. So there you go. We have totally gone off the rails now on the show. Let's get the text line going again. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Okay, just for making a, a, a Freddy the Flute reference, I think I found my winner for the text line today. I think I found my winner. But Marshall, Georgia State coming up Thursday night. We're going to probably have to break down what you need to know this week as far as what the parking situation is going to be, how soon you can get into the stadium. It's going to be a 7 o'clock game. We've got it for you. We'll go on the air at 4 o'clock. Kickoff is going to be right after 7 right here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So I don't know what tailgating is going to look like on Thursday. That's sort of the, that's sort of the downside to this. The tailgating situation. What does a tailgate look like on a Thursday night? I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of fans don't like the midweek game. It's because what's the tailgate look like? Well, people are getting off work and then they're running down quickly and trying to get set up. Some people have the ability to actually just take off work. Others just don't work and they're heading down and they're tailgating. So there'll be a mix. But at the same time, we have a situation where there's going to be a lot of people transitioning from one part of their day to the next. It's not a typical Saturday game. Thursday night game, you probably want to get there early. You probably want to get in line early so you can get through the gates as quickly as you possibly can, get inside the stadium, and get ready for this one. So we'll uh, hopefully get a little bit better direction when that stuff happens and opens up this week. Back to our text line. Texture says, Paul? I don't want to see coaches celebrating field goals again in the first half like they won a Willie Merrick championship game. No, the only time you celebrate a field goal is when you win the national championship like Willie Merrick or you win the game. If it's a game-winning field goal, then sure, have at it. If it's a field goal and you're putting three points on the board, I think you can be excited for the players, but... I think some of you thought that Coach put a little too much energy into that. I mean, again, he was happy. He was happy for his guys. They got some points on the board. I get it. But rule of thumb, unless the kicker wins the game, and it can include a national championship, if the kicker wins the game on the field goal, then you can get excited, truly excited. Until then, it's a field goal. It's it's sort of um, it's a crucial crucial three points. In certain parts of the game, you want to you want touchdowns. You don't want field goals. But if you need one to win a game or to put a team away, then you get excited for it. But I go with the save the celebration for the game winner. Same thing with celebrating in the end zone. Act like you've been there before. Get your touchdown. Celebrate. Okay, good. You can have some fun, but let's not make this a production. Let's get lined up and get back at it. I guess I guess I'm taking the fun out of football, aren't I? Don't forget, if you missed any part of the show today, you can catch it on our podcast. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Also, uh, I will remind you that you can download the app at wrvc.com. We get the podcast available there. So if there's any time where you can't stream the show or you can't listen to it live, you can always go back and download the podcast. Again, available at wrvc.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or just wherever you get your podcasts. And that's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back with you tomorrow. We'll have more from Coach Huff as we get ready for Marshall and Georgia State. It's a short turnaround for these two teams. We'll hear more from the head coach tomorrow as the team continues to prepare. And we'll hear from you. All right. Don't forget also tomorrow, 
Another chance to win a four-pack of tickets to go see the Herd take on Georgia State. We'll do that tomorrow. We'll do that on Wednesday. Be looking out for that text. If you won, you'll get a text here in just a moment that you're the winner. So keep your phones handy, ready to go. Have a great night, everyone. Broadcasting from the Dave & Buster's studios. Eat, drink, play, and watch at Dave & Buster's in the Huntington Mall. ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. WRBC, W231BS Huntington.